Hi everybody, it's Erin from EB Mixed Media. It is spring along the coast of Maine in the United States and I can't think of a better prompt for today than renewal. Spring is a time of new beginnings and fresh starts so I'm going to be planting a renewal garden today. I'm going to be using my hands and getting really messy to do a lot of finger painting and create fabulous flowers to include in this garden. I hope you'll join me. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get to it. I'm choosing to use a piece of paper just because it's easier to film um, and easier for you to see rather than working in a book that might be um, uneven. I wanna start my page by doing some messy journaling and contemplating our theme of renewal and thinking about where I am in the year in regards to um, setting goals for the year and considering the word for the year that I chose. My word for the year this year was enough. And I'm just gonna write it. And I'm gonna write it messily. I'm not gonna try to be neat. You can be neat if you'd like. I'm just scribbling. But getting some of my thoughts down on paper about how successful I've been in using this word to guide me throughout the year. And considering with spring in the air, um, a sense of rebirth, renewal, second chances, what do I need to do, if anything, to pivot or to change or to recommit myself to the goals and the thoughts I had in choosing this word for the year? So let's do it. So now that we've sort of journaled a reflection on how we've been doing so far and what we're hoping in the next coming months and kind of recommitted ourselves to our word for the year, what we're going to do now is start putting down some background papers to add some depth to our finished piece. And I'm going to start with just neutrals. So these are just book pages, uh, dictionary pages, um, nothing too precious. This will mostly be covered up, but it will be nice to have some of it peeking through in the final piece. Now that we have our background papers, our neutral background papers down, I want to go ahead and get some colorful painted papers. And because I'm thinking of creating a garden, I'm keeping them in the blues and greens family. Uh, I'm gonna just start putting these down now. Everything's glued down now, and we're gonna do some finger painting. And I think it's really fun to get hands-on, to blend with your fingers. You get really nice, swirly, dreamy results. Some people don't like it, and it can be very messy. And so while I'd love for you to take a stab at it, um, if you're completely opposed to painting with your fingers, you can always put on some latex gloves, uh, and then you don't have the mess all over your hands or you could use a brush if you wanted to use a brush. So I'm gonna use my fingers and basically what I wanna do in this step is sort of tie all of these um, bits and pieces together so that they all blend together and look like they're of a piece as opposed to just uh, pieces of scrap paper glued down on the page. I should also mention I am just using basic white gesso here. So we're gonna continue like we did with the gesso and we're gonna just be adding some color into our page. Here I'm using Key West from Apple Barrel Craft Paints and Light Olive Green from Amsterdam. So what I wanna do here is just take a bit of each color and I'm gonna fill in just a little bit here and there. And this is gonna give the illusion of flowers in our garden. I'm using Peachy Pink, Golden Sunset, and Pink Eraser from Apple Barrel Paints. I'm gonna now take my Jelly Roll pen in black and I'm going to start identifying some floral shapes. Now, you don't wanna get really detailed in this or stress out over making these flowers look realistic. This is gonna be in the background and not really appear. So, um, you're just looking for sort of the, the idea of a floral. So I can see one here. I can see that. And the nice thing about it is using your fingers, you're getting swirls on the page that look 
uh, like petals. Here's another one here. That's it. Very easy. Don't stress over this. Don't worry about trying to get perfect, perfect florals. You're just giving an impression or a hint of flowers in the background. Let's make some more flowers for our garden. We're gonna use our fingers to paint some gorgeous florals. Once again, if you don't wanna use your fingers, you can probably use a brush to do this, no problem. And if you don't like getting messy, you're welcome, like I'm messy, you're welcome to put on some gloves um, in order to keep your hands clean. Uh, so we're gonna make some really loose florals with our fingers, and they're not gonna look like much until we start adding our pen. So right now, trust the process. These will look good when we're done, okay? For this one, I'm kind of making a W, really. Let's make some cone flowers. These are some of my favorites. This is again, classic kindergarten finger painting that we're going to be doing here. Simple as can be, but making such sweet, cute little florals. Let's start with our pink and we are literally going to make fingerprints. So we're just gonna make a little circle with our fingerprints. And you can make, by pressing down a little harder, you can get a larger petal by not quite mixing. You can get some nice variations, much like a floral uh, would have. So I have my black jelly roll pen again, and now we're gonna turn these into flowers as opposed to just finger painted blobs. I find the more loose your hand is, the less you try to make it perfect, the better. You can even hold it further back to get a looser feel. Let's work on these. Once again, the lines that your fingers made as you were laying down the paint can guide you. minute to look at all the fabulous florals we've created. We started out, I think, with these um, that sort of look like um, peonies, maybe, or hydrangea, 
all the color variations. These are our cone flowers, Black Eyed Susans. We have our W's that we made, right? Lots of variation in color on these. These I added the little, um, I don't know what those are called in the center of a flower like that. Adds a little whimsy, almost looks like a poppy. And then we have our tiny little posies that are so sweet. So now we're gonna take all of this great stuff that we've created, these wonderful florals, and we're gonna build our garden and recommit ourselves to our um, goals and aspirations for the year with our garden of renewal. So here's what we created earlier. And now is the fun part of merely just laying out our florals in our garden. And if you want, you can sort of think of each of these flowers, these larger flowers, as a goal that you're recommitting yourself to, um, and or perhaps a new goal that you've decided to set for yourself. Another idea would be to write your goal or aspiration down on the back of each flower. And that way you're sort of, once again, renewing your commitment to um, your goals and aspirations for the year. Once your layout's determined, then you just start gluing it down. I like to just use a simple glue stick. So we've just a couple more steps to finish off our garden. I want to add some splatters and I'm just going to use my fan brush with some white gesso, a little bit of water, and we'll put some splatters on our page. And once your splatters are dry, I have done just a little sentiment, my word for the year, enough. And I'm going to add that to the page to renew my commitment to this word and to the goals. I've set out for myself for the year. That does it for us. I hope you enjoyed um, my lesson as part of Messy May. Um, I was so happy to be here with you and so thankful to Get Messy for reaching out to me to provide this um, inspiration for you. I, I hope you found in this exercise and creating this garden a renewed sense of purpose as you head into spring and the rest of the year. Thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of Messy May.